as it has it, I have a real problem with the current state of photographic education online. It is so focused towards replicating the results that somebody else has created. And while that's obviously an important part of learning the craft of photography, we're missing a trick and people are being deprived of the real essence of how you become a better photographer. But there are ways on how we can address this. A photographer, for instance, never really makes a photograph unless it, he's moved by it, is excited by it, or deeply interested in it. A uh, picture taker and a button pusher, I would particularly call them, he just shoots at things that he has seen other people do. The photographer establishes a relationship, an intimate relationship between himself and whatever he's photographing, whether it's a can of beans, a landscape, or Greta Garbo. Over the weekend, we were clearing out our spare bedroom because we're going to do some exercise and getting a little bit, bit fit. And I came across stacks of books because I'm, like, I'm, I'm one of these people who just buy books and buy books too much. And I found these guys here. So these are a series of well, they're fairly slim volumes called Masters of Contemporary Photography. I think they were published maybe like the late 70s, somewhere around there. And there's a whole range of them. And within these books, and this particular one is the photo essay, how to share action ideas through, uh, through pictures by Paul Fusco and Will McBride. And in addition to saying at the back includes a complete technical section, which is again the how to, it also includes discussion with the photographers, them talking about their processes, them talking about the way that they're approaching photography, what they're thinking. This is where we start to get away from simply following else, following somebody else's direction and, and bringing it back to our own sort of creative expression by listening to the, the way that other people are approaching their ideas. It's not about how to's, it's about why's. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, then you know that I'm all about the, the, the why of photography rather than the how. You know, the how's an easy thing to learn. If you want to look at how to create photographs like Dwayne Michaels, okay, you shoot a sequence and you shoot them in black and white. That's, that's pretty much the how part. But why does he take these exceptionally bizarre photographs? What, what's, you know, what's the rationale behind it? And it says, you know, straight off the bat, you have to be cuckoo. People have always accused me of being weird and I love it. The best people are the weird ones. It's the straight, nice people you have to watch out for. That's the opening of his book. He's just talking about his awards and things like that. He's just talking about like how he's a weirdo. I love these kind of things where you get to hear the, 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 in, the internal dialogue almost of what the photographers thinking. It makes such a refreshing change from the usual things of I'm standing here, it's f 2.8 and the light is doing this and I want to get everything. That's, that seems to be very sterile for want of a better word. And these books, you know, th these are just one example, the photographic illusion. This is the one about Dwayne Michaels. There are a number of other things. If you're of a certain age, you may remember the old Time Life books. Well, Time Life have a whole volume. I, I think there's 20 volumes like this, and I have them somewhere else. I should have counted them, but you know, <laughs> whatever. This one is, is the art of photography. And when, you know, in here there's, there are assignments that you can try, there's discussion about photography and time, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's, here we go, there's some, uh, some Mario Giacomelli, look at those guys, I'll see if I can find this picture of these, these, these guys throwing <laughs> people up in the air, and it's a picture from 1965, and it looks so modern, so fresh. That leads us on to another great thing that you get when you look at books like this, when you take time to step away from the monitor, and I'm, I'm aware of the irony here, yeah, I'm talking to you on a monitor and then you're telling you to step away. But, you know, these are 
introductions to a world of photography that is so difficult to understand online. I first came across those Time Life books, these guys here, when I was at photo school. And obviously being around a lot of other photographers, you know, student photographers and lecturers, you're gonna get told about people. But if I sat there looking at these books, I had a little library outside the, the color lab while we were waiting for our prints to come through, that I was reading books, looking at pictures, and seeing the work of photographers who's nobody else was was talking about there's there's one page here this is there's some Paul Strand here look there's there's some Paul Strand now if you're not familiar with Paul Strand massively hugely influential photographer and you know his his work is 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 a joy to behold I see so I, 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 you know, I see a lot of echoes of his work in mine I don't know if that's me being a bit pee you know, a bit woo you know broad edit but it resonated with me maybe because there were aspects in his work I went oh I actually quite like that so it sort of moved me in a direction but then also you get introduced to other photographers who I've never heard of you know here on one page we have August Sander now he is a well-known German photographer. He photographed lots of people in the sort of interwar years, massively respected. And if you spend any time, you know, learning about the history of photography, his name will surface. He, he you know, he is looking and, and influencing people like, uh, you know, um, I totally forgotten her name, of course. Why would I do this? Why would I sit down and totally forget somebody's name? It's Diane Arbus is the person I'm looking for. These kind of, you know, these, these, these echoes through history. And that's a wonderful thing. But on the, on the facing page, there is a photographer called Neil Slavin, who I've never heard of. Now, if you have heard of some of these people, you know, let me know in the comments. Or if you have these books, when did you get them? Did you rebuy them? I bought this set a little while ago because I wanted to use them to help me, you know, bring the joy, the love, the awesomeness of photography that goes beyond the lenses and all that kind of stuff to you because this is what I love. This is what I love about photography is just paging through these books and discovering names that you've possibly forgotten. I've got some Bruce Davidson here. I've, you know, I don't often know or look at his work, but I know the name. But then you've got Emmett Gowen. That's somebody you've never heard of. But I'm, I'm intrigued by this, this photograph and, you know, I might be encouraged to go off and, and look at, you know, the work later on online. That, of course, this is the beauty of what we have today in the world, that we can go and search for these people. Now, at this juncture, Somebody's going to sit there and go, how can you not know these people? How can you not know these names? Do you not have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of all the photographers ever and stuff like that? And of course, no. No, I don't, you don't, we don't, you know. It's just how we are. But having these books to hand, having some sort of physical gateway to photography is, I think, a, a priceless option to have. And this brings us back to the whole thing about education online. It is made and sold, and I have no problem with people selling knowledge, selling education. I do it myself, There's, um, this is not a slight at them, but there is a huge loss in the market. There are the people, you know, if you wanna go and find a course about making photographs sharp, right, okay. Just this weekend, I got three different photographers telling me that this was the last chance for me to buy their course on sharp photographs. You know, okay, that's easy. You can go and find it. But, you know, what happens when you get to the end of that road? When you've kind of learned all the technical bits that you feel are what you need? Because you don't need to be like the most uber spectacular technical photographer to make you know, interesting pictures. You need to have the very thing that these books and interviews with other photographers give you. And that is little truth bombs, directions, aha moments that I, don't, I can't quite eloquently put it into words, but make the photographs feel, or the process of taking photographs, feel less like a science and, and more like an art. So as there is a dearth of photography education that really talks about 
the how and you know, you know why of, of the process of, of thinking about an image, of, of, of actually doing the somewhat arbitrary process of, of you know, putting the little ideas together in your head. Where, where do you get all this stuff? Well, obviously you can buy these books. They're, they are surprisingly cheap. And there was a period where not just Masters of Photography, but the Time Life stuff, and there's a whole bunch of, of books that were being put out there. There was a whole course that was, I, I forget what it's called. It's something like the Masters uh, manuscript or something, where you had people like Richard Avedon. Urban Penn, I believe, was in there. Hugely famous, massively major names, where it was a correspondence course. They would send you a folder with a bunch of stuff in there and, you know, sort of look at it. And then you could actually, as far as I'm aware, you could send your pictures off to them and, and they, would, they would give you feedback. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is amazing. So there are, you know, there's a couple of things. So there's the books. There are, if you want to spend some time, you know, you can go and find documentaries of, of photographers where they are talking. In the States on, on PBS, there were a lot of videos about people, you know, you know where they interviewed, the, and one that springs to mind is a video that I've, I've used in the past with um, Alfred, not Alfred Stiggers, Edward Steichen. That, wow, you get to listen to the, to the thoughts of, of a man who is a visionary. And so Adams, when he talks about his process, about how he mixes up the ideas, you know, and, and like thinks about it from a musical point of view and, and, and how he wasn't happy with some of the prints and he came back to things and stuff like that. That gives you a far greater insight, I think, into feeling okay with sometimes stumbling around blindly in photography, trying to you know, learn the more esoteric, more intangible, aspects that go beyond you know just kind of oh how to make a picture sharp if you take anything from these books these ideas of the photographers who have have gone before us then it should be that when you look through this particular volume for example you know the, the art of photography hmm. <laughs> not penned by um, by our friend um Mr. Forbes, but, uh, but, but the art of photography nevertheless. What strikes me is the images in here are really diverse. And, and, I, and I don't mean that from a modern context. I mean that from the point that, as I'm flicking through here, it's not just a homogenous sea of images. There are themes, obviously, because you know, they're trying to talk about certain ideas, but the images are not blending into one. They're not just the same thing done over and over and over again in slightly different ways. Each one, while it has a core idea that is, you know, echoed from one to the next, stands alone by itself. It is so refreshing to flick through a body of work and not just see the same thing again and again. If you want to give your ideas a kickstart, if you want to really start, you know, getting to grips about the wonderful whys of photography, then seek out these documentaries, seek out these books. If you know of any other great series from you know, from way back in the day, maybe National Geographic did something or something like that. Let us know in the comments below. Share this knowledge. Every Saturday, I put out a newsletter called Saturday Selections, which talks about the why of photography. If you'd like to join the other 1,000 photographers, yes, 1,000 people, so thank you in, in like a week, it's awesome. Click on the link in the description box below. Thank you ever so much for watching and check out this awesome video about Ebersteichen over here. Thank you ever so much. Bye-bye.